In our previous video, we alluded to the fact that we could use something called sessions in order to store data that the user inputs into a form so that we can use it later on on the website without having to save it like we have in our previous examples into hidden form inputs. So let's go ahead and take a look at a simple implementation of a session so you know what I'm talking about. So in the forms and sessions folder in the resource pack, let's go ahead and open up the sixth step, which is called saving data with sessions. Go ahead and copy the entire code and paste it over the code in test.php and save it. So this might look a little refreshing after our longer PHP code in our previous examples. So at the very top here, what we're doing is running this function called session start. When we want to use a session, this is what we need to do to start it. It's pretty simple. Once we've done this, then we have access to this variable called session. So in our previous examples, when we were working with forms, you saw the same structure of a variable name, the dollar sign and underscore, and then the name of the variable being in all capital letters. So you saw this for git, post, and then another one for request. Session is another one of those variables. And the idea is that we can manipulate the data inside of this variable, it's simply an array, in order to take information from one page refresh to another. So after we add something to this variable, and then we refresh the page or we navigate to another place on the site, this session variable is always going to be available to us with that data. So in this example, we're doing something pretty simple. We're taking a variable inside of the session array called refresh log, and we're adding a new item to the array every time the page refreshes. And the item will say, you loaded this page on, and then it will tell us the exact time that the page was loaded. Now, just to be clear, this refresh log session variable is one that we're creating. It isn't something that existed when session was created. We're using the date function, and we explored the date function in an earlier video, but the first parameter it takes are some tokens that will be replaced by certain aspects of the time. So in this case, it will be the hour, the minute, and the seconds. So every time this refresh log gets reloaded, it will add a new item to it, and then we're going to go ahead and print it out. We're going to use a function called array reverse in order to reverse the order of those log messages in the refresh log array. So this way it will show the newest entries first. And then we're going to loop through each item and pull out the value and print it out as a paragraph. So pretty straightforward here. The main point is that we're showing how the session variable persists over multiple page loads. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the browser and I'm going to refresh our test.php file. And you see now it says, you loaded this page on, and then it says 10 o'clock with 41 seconds. Now if we refresh this page again, you'll see we have a new line that says, you loaded this page on 10 o'clock 53 seconds. And we can continue refreshing, and every time we do, it will add a new line. So now just to reiterate, the two points that are unique about sessions are, one, I'm going to go back to the code, we have to start it by calling session start. And then two, after we do that, we can add new variables to the session array in order to persist them across multiple page loads. Now one thing that's important to note about a session is that a session will end whenever the user closes a browser, and new sessions will be loaded up if the user opens up new browsers. So even though we have this session data, we really don't know anything about the individual, so these sessions are virtually anonymous. As we work through the PHP videos, we're going to start looking at using a database in order to store information so that even if the user closes out their session by closing the browser window or it times out and the session ends because it's been too long since the user had some activity on the site, we can instead use a database in order to store information about the user that we can use later on.